Let's talk about Riesling. Riesling is one of those grape varieties that wine experts often say, hey, it's the greatest grape variety in the world, and I think we should ask why they say that. And secondly, we should say, why is it that the consumers don't get the message? I think two things. I've actually heard that you Johnson's fan, one of your friends, Brit friends, I mean. And a Riesling. Uh, no, you know, this is his favorite Brit yes. Riesling, and I've always, I, I, and, and actually, when I started, started studying wines, um, it was Bordeaux and uh, Burgundy French wines and Riesling from Germany, so I have my fond memories. I just had a, I went to a German tasting of the day, and we started with the 1921. We started with the 1921 truck and Baron Auslitz, so this is at Lord Bernard Den. Yeah. What did you consider? I'll, I'll show you the menu later. But I think there is something about it. Uh, first of all, low in alcohol. You know, we're talking about 8 to 10 percent in alcohol. Easy to drink yeah. uh, and uh, great with food. So right. All of those things are why we think it's good. And of course, that thing of it, it, it's supposed to express its place. I think it does. Yeah. Do you reckon that, Matt? No other grape variety exceeds it. I mean, except Pinot Noir. If you said in the world of white grapes, and I'm including here, of course, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, Arnais, you know, choose your poison. No other grape variety except Pinot Noir is more expressive of sight than the reason. The proof of this, of course, comes from Germany above all. You know, in Germany, many other people have been to Germany, you've got these steep slopes, you have, you know, it's like a slate roof in the Mosel Zaluba. And it is astonishing, through the vehicle of reason, the difference between one tiny site and another tiny site. And then you go to Australia's Clare Valley, and you, again, you have maybe not that extreme place specificity, but there is no question that what they're doing in Australia with Riesling is highly site-specific. I think you're absolutely right. If you like minerality, I think that's really what it's coming from. That minerality of the soil coming up into the taste and into the nose and into your mouth, I think that that's what it does. But again, I'm going to go back to that food thing, because they, I mean, Al's asked, well, let's even talk about where, where good Riesling comes from. You mentioned Clara Valley. Uh, I know you got married in Alsace. Is yes, that right? this is right here. Okay, this, so. this label right here. <laughs> where, that's and this where, little church. That's where we got and I can see this you. Is, back. This oh, is, you we yes. were right there. This church goes back to the 12th century, and there was this giant book. This, by the way, is a wine called Clou Saint Une from the producer named Trimbach. And Hubert Trimbach, who is the co owner, was my best man. And there you are in your bathers and your bow tie. I had what a sight. It was a wonderful wedding. So no one was invited. Just, it, was, it was just the two of us, and Hubert was the best man, and then there was Marie Laure, was the best woman, and we went into this tiny, tiny little church, it was a fortified church, in the sea of vines, you could see it, you know, on this sort of thing, there's all these vines there, and you walked in, and there was an enormous book, almost the size of this table, and you opened it up, and you had to sign your names, and so, you know, the book in went blood. back in blood, you know, look, this was France, you get married. Said do, said do, monsieur. But so, no. coming back, Alsace is certain. But, I, but I'll tell you something, there's something about that lifestyle, okay? That yes. whole thing about lifestyle, people involved in wine, they want to get married in vineyards. And that's what, that's what they're Absolutely. doing around the, around the world. People are getting married around grape varieties. Yeah. But don't, you think, don't you think that what Matt's saying there is sense of place par excellence? Because oh, yeah. sense of place is not just what the soil is and, and, and how, the, how the wind and the no. sun go. But cold. also, you were there. Yes. It's people. Right. Now, are we saying that Riesling producers are particularly good at bringing the passion of their place into the wine? I think the Riesling producers, along with Pinot Noir producers, are the most maniacal in creating wines that, that they attempt, anyway, to have speak of place. I, I don't know whether you are, or Kevin. Well, they have to have a passion, especially yeah. with Pinot Noir. Yeah. You have to have, you, if you're growing Pinot Noir or Riesling, you have to have a passion, especially if you're in Germany, trying to walk up. I can't, I was there last year, I couldn't walk up the slopes. Maybe that's age. What? <laughs> I I can't. Can't. Some I of the places the slopes. in the Mosul Valley, they have these little pulley trains. Oh, yeah. And, and you sit sure. on the train. <laughs> and you, sort of, you snip the grapes as you go up on the train. Right. And then they let you down again the next row. There is something I would like to, to put in. And coming back to Alsace for a moment, where the Rieslings are traditionally dry. And higher in alcohol. Yes, somewhat higher okay. in alcohol. But we were all raised, I know Cameron and I were, and I suspect you in England as well, that red wine with red meat, white wine with fish. In Alsace, they serve Riesling with meat because they don't really have any tradition of red wine. They basically, if they drink red, it's usually Bordeaux. They, <laughs> the producers trade bottles with the Bordeaux producers. And, you know, 
it is one of the things about Riesling that people forget with dry Riesling is that it has such a punch of flavor and it has such beautiful acidity that it really can take on things like red meat. And I'm thinking specifically of sausages, things that have a certain amount of fattiness to them. And it works beautifully. And when you go to Alsace, and you have a, what they call a choucroute garni, which is sauerkraut with garnished with Thank sausages. You. Look at that. We even got a German. Uh, German you even have a German? Uh, the, 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 uh, uh, great uh, house. Uh, yeah, we'll try oh, that at home. Label. Look at this wonderful. label. Yeah. And this, the, label the, you know, this, this is the is old success. style German label. What's this happened in Germany uh, is, and, and also in Alsace, yes. and around the, around the world, trying to make them user friendly. Yes. This is the old Gothic script. I can't read it. I don't understand it. Oh, I won't buy so it. so beautiful. But, I mean, but, it's one but, of the great wines in the world. I love this wine, but actually, it would take me five minutes on the label to work out what the vintage was. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think, is this one of the points about Riesling that, that the consumers have a problem with? That actually, it's difficult to understand, partly because a lot of the best producers are Germanic, and the, and the Germanic producers are obsessive about detail, and partly because they don't know whether it's going to be sweet, medium, or dry. Identity crisis. Bingo. Bingo. Identity crisis. I think you've put your finger well, on Well, there is somebody out there right now, a friend Dan Berger out in California, who's, who's going to put a sweetest level on all German wines throughout the world, on the highest level you know, being the sweetest, and the lowest level being the driest. Uh, let's, let's make a point here right now. Re German Rieslings can be dry. They right. can be semi-dry, they can be sweet, they can be semi-sweet, they can be very sweet. In Alsace, most, can I make it, correct me if I'm wrong, about 95% dry in Alsace? Would you go along with that? Yeah, probably somewhere between 90 and 95. And, and, and in and, Australia, 101% right. dry. Okay, yes. there you go. And, and as drier than almost any other wine and in the they, world. And they tout that as well. So this is this is a difficulty for consumers to understand. Now, I'm going to come back to my own state, New York State, and I think the Finger Lakes District produces some of the best Riesling in the world. Once again, on the lake, Finger Lakes, yes. on the slopes, the soil coming through, uh, and, and making both dry and sweet Riesling. 